In this clip, Joe and astronomer David Kipping react to videos and images of a comet. Check it out. What is the, the closest we've gotten to landing on something and taking a piece of it and taking off with a probe? We've done it with comets. We've done it with... The Japanese have done it a couple of times, I think, with comets. And yeah. have they found amino acids on these comets? Yeah, yeah. They have. Yeah, amino acids are all over the place. They're in deep yeah. space. They're, they're on these comets, yeah. So amino acids are common. Organic molecules are common. Pro I mean, we never touched a protein anywhere. So there's a big step. You know, you've got the jigsaw pieces, but no one has seen the jigsaw pieces magically arrange themselves into the right position. Right. Do you contemplate the idea of panspermia? Yeah. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe and is distributed by meteoroids, comets, or spacecraft, suggesting that life's building blocks or microorganisms could travel between planets, seeding life elsewhere. Yeah, it's... it's uh... It's plausible. I don't know how likely it is for the Earth because um, it's just not. It doesn't really help. I don't think in any meaningful way, right? So the maybe you'd say that it depends what you're talking about. Panspermia between star systems, or panspermia just between the planets in the solar system. Well, between star system. I mean, well, something from somewhere else. Obviously, our solar system. We're the only form of life. But it's to me the idea of something hitting a planet, knocking off a big chunk of it, having a bunch of amino acids on it, and the, them landing somewhere else. Yeah. So fascinating. Well, what this is this, thing... Jamie? Oh, yeah, this was uh, 67P. This is the surface of a comet? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Like a probe on the Rosetta. Comet 67P was studied by ESA's Rosetta mission and revealed a dusty, icy surface with organic molecules, water ice, and complex geology. Its duck-shaped structure and outgassing jets provided insights into solar system formation. Wow. Rosetta mission. I love these. Yeah, the Rosetta mission on Comet 67P. Yeah. That is so crazy. Look at all that dust coming off the thing. That's, what, <sighs> that's what's happening to Atlas right now. If you could go on the surface of Atlas, it would probably look something like that. So wild. It's so wild when you realize these things are real, right? This yeah. is the if you you know you look at the images of like the Mars landers or uh, landing on Titan, you realize this isn't. It's like when you look through a telescope for the first time, you see Saturn, you're like, this isn't fiction. This stuff's really out. Yeah, there. this is crazy. And there's not just this. There's billions of freaking exoplanets across the entire galaxy. It's yeah. so mind bending when you just stop and take a breath and think about what the hell is out there. I mean, imagine the day when we get a really clear image of the surface of one of those planets, especially one of those water-based planets. Yeah, yeah. You see a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming around. <laughs> uh, giraffe? Is that the best you could come up with, Joe? I mean, I, there's a lot of people that believe that some forms of life on Earth might have come here from somewhere else. And one of the things they point to is cephalopods. One of the things oh, they point yeah, to is like, this, yeah. they're so weird. Yeah. They're so weird. Cuttlefish are so weird. Yeah. Octopuses are so weird. They're so weird. They're intelligent. They solve puzzles. They can open up jars. Their their eyeballs are kind of similar in evolution to ours, but they divided hundreds of millions of years ago. And these things exist. What is that, Jay? I think this is real. Yeah, I what? think this is uh, 67 p. I think again. this is that comet. It said the image when I pulled it up said this was a video made up of 400,000 different images. What? So this might be on its way in the landing or yeah. when it was zooming around it. taken. This is the Japanese um, images no, from this the is, comet? This is ESA mission, I think. Six, uh, yeah, yeah, it was European that mission. Holy shit, man. Yeah, it kind of got stuck in the little ravine, which is kind of unfortunate, actually, where it landed. Because it could have been even more breathtaking if it got a better spot. It's still so crazy. I know. <laughs> That's so nuts. I feel like I would need to see an alien in these photos in order to be blown away. Looks like the same pictures could be achieved with a microscopic camera on the bottom of a grill. Yeah, I mean, we don't. There could be all kinds of weird life out there, right? I mean, I was yes. thinking, like, what? What about if it's just like a fungus, right? It's just a right. whole, whole plant is a fungus, and that's it. It's never known other life forms at all, and that's just that's just its whole thing. But also, the, fungus probably came here from other places, because you think about what's the one thing that can survive in a, a vacuum? Spore. Yeah. Spores. Yeah. Yeah, and tardigrades. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible. I think the problem is that you look at the genetic heritage of of life. And you know, this tree of life, and you kind of rewind the tape. There was a great study that's done recently in Nature by uh, Moody et al. And uh, I found it really inspiring, this paper, because they had dated what's called Luca, which is the um, last universal common ancestor. Here are some visuals of Luca. It truly boggles the mind that all life came from that. 
So we, we have you know a huge number of genes which are the same as each other, but even with giraffes, octopuses, plants, we all, there's a huge number of overlap. So you can kind of retrace the tree and figure out what was the organism that started it all, that like lived at the bottom of this tree, and that's called LUCA. And that thing, they've now age-dated it to live 4.2 billion years ago. So the oceans formed about 4.4 billion years ago, and 200 million years after that, You've got organisms. And not just one. The, the, these things would have been all over the planet, all over the place. There was a whole ecosphere at that point of these things. So that, that was quick that life got going. Yeah. And that, to me, is probably the most compelling reason to believe that life is common. And if you would imagine the diversity in what you've exp- – just what we know now about solar systems and – how different life could possibly be with just a few variables off warmer weather colder weather more water less water some different compounds different plants different maybe a lack of asteroids maybe Mm -hmm. a lack of comets lack of anything that might might slam into the planet maybe it lives in a much more stable area that's not like where we are we're we're essentially in a shooting gallery This is a pretty grim fact. Earth resides in a cosmic shooting gallery due to its location in the asteroid-rich solar system. Gravitational influences from Jupiter and the Sun perturb asteroid orbits, sending them toward Earth, risking collisions and impacts. If something can, like, have no disruptions, like through civilization, all to the invention of whatever the hell they have there with whatever resources they have there, it's almost impossible to imagine, like, what we're dealing with and what we're talking about it's one of the more fascinating things about science fiction is that they don't have any they don't have any limitations if you want to have a, a thing that exists on earth well it has to be there it has to do this it has to science fiction you could have almost anything yeah and when you take into account the fact that we haven't found anything like earth anywhere else and you have all these different planets and all these different planets that might be in a Goldilocks zone. And maybe that's not even important because we found life in volcanic vents underneath right. the ocean. So, like, what, what's out there? Yeah, it could. I mean, Europa could have life on it. Uh, the- Europa is actually pretty interesting. It lies about 390 million miles from Earth with a subsurface ocean potentially holding more water than Earth's oceans. Traveling at 25,000 miles per hour, a spacecraft would take roughly one year and eight months to reach it. Its cracked reddish surface, thin oxygen atmosphere, and possible water plumes make it a prime astrobiology target. So the mystery is, you know, if you run the calculation, I was just doing this a couple of days ago, there's about a one in a thousand chance that you would live at this early point in the history of the universe, all things being equal. If these stars legitimately could have planets around them and biospheres whenever they want throughout their history, then you would be very, it's kind of like reading a book and opening a random page and that f- you happen to land on the first you know, couple of pages of the book. And that's where we land. Thank you so much for watching. Would love to hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you in the next one.